Today we will see how to evaluate the integrals of the form square root ax squared plus bx plus c dx. The methods discussed in this video are also valid for the integrals of the form integration 1 over square root ax squared plus bx plus c dx. The examples that we discussed today will be only from this first format. In the future, we may discuss some more examples from this second format. However, no matter whether you have a question from that first format or this second format, the methods discussed in this video will equally be applicable. All right. Now, these integrals, we are going to split into four separate cases. Remember, first of all, that we defined a discriminant. The discriminant was defined as b squared minus 4ac. Remember, this symbol is a Greek letter delta. Based on whether this delta or the discriminant or b squared minus 4ac is positive or is equal to zero or is negative, we have unique approach for each case. Well, even though it sounds like we can split this into three basic categories, we are going to split that actually into four basic categories. We have four basic categories that is because from one special case, that is when delta is greater than zero, we are going to look at two sub cases. When delta is greater than zero, case one that we are going to consider is when a is also greater than zero, where a is the coefficient of x squared term. The other case is when a is less than zero. Because this case has two sub cases, altogether we are going to see four different cases. And there are standard substitutions for three of those four cases. And for one case, we can straight away use the standard table. All right, now we are going to look at each of those four cases. The first case is when delta is greater than zero and a is also greater than zero. In this situation, we go for a standard substitution using secant theta. I will go for the details of that substitution in a minute, but first I'm going to address these four cases. The second case is a subcategory of the same thing, that is also when delta is greater than zero, but a is less than zero. In this case, we will go for a substitution using sine theta. All right, and then we go for the third case. In the third case, we are going to look at the situation where delta is equal to zero. In that case, we will only consider one sub case where a is greater than zero and also c is greater than zero. In this situation, we will not need any substitution. In fact, finally, we'll have to evaluate an integral of the form integration px plus q dx just a nice first order linear combination and you can easily evaluate this integral maybe you can evaluate this integral for each term or you can evaluate this integral considering this whole thing as one term using the integration of a x plus b everything raised to the nth power in that case the answer of this one will be equal to p x plus q raised to the second power divided by 2p so for this third case we will not need a substitution Please also note that we will only look at the situation where a is greater than zero and c is also greater than zero with the case delta is equal to zero. I will let you think why we do not consider delta equal zero and a or c, at least one of them being negative. All right, then we look at the fourth and the last case. That is when delta, the discriminant is less than zero and with that we only consider the case where a is greater than zero in that case you will have to go for a substitution using tangent theta once again i will let you think why we do not consider the case where a is negative when delta is also negative all right now we are going to look at the details of each of these four cases case number one we look at the situation where delta is greater than zero and also a is greater than zero. Remember again, for this case, we are going to use secant theta. Let's look at an example. Let's say we need to evaluate the integral square root x squared minus 4x minus 21 dx. In this case, if you compare it with ax squared plus bx plus c, you can see that a is equal to 1, b is equal to negative 4, and c is equal to negative 21. 
Now, if you look at delta, the discriminant, which is b squared minus 4ac, we know b squared is negative 4, everything squared minus 4, a is 1, and c is negative 21. Because this term is negative 21, this is also negative. All of this term is going to be positive. Of course, this term is already positive. Therefore, we can see quite easily that if you simplify all of that, it's going to be a positive value. So delta greater than zero is the first case that we are going to consider here. And A is equal to one, which is already positive. All right, now let's see how to solve this problem. In order to solve this problem, before thinking about how to use secant theta, we have to first complete the square. If I complete the square, this is going to be equal to integral inside the square root. This is what I have, x squared minus 4x minus 21. So when I complete the square, I should write x minus 2 everything squared. And then I have to subtract 2 squared, which is a 4. And I already have a negative 21 inside the square root and outside I have a dx. All right, now I'm going to simplify this one a little bit. Integration inside the square root, I have x minus two, everything squared, minus four minus 21 will be simplified to become minus 25, which I'm going to write as minus five squared. All that's inside the square root and then dx. Now it's time to use the substitution. So the substitution we are going to use is x minus two is equal to five secant theta. Please note that I have a 5 right here. That is because right here I have 5 squared. I took square root of that and connected that with the secant theta right here. All right. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to differentiate both sides. Then I get dx being equal to 5 secant theta tangent theta d theta. Remember, if you differentiate secant theta, we get secant theta tangent theta. All right, now this integral becomes equal to integration inside square root. The first term is x minus 2 squared. We know x minus 2 is equal to 5 secant theta. So the first term is going to be 5 squared secant squared theta. And then I have minus 5 squared. All that's inside the square root. And then I have a dx term. We know that dx is equal to all of these. 5 secant theta tangent theta d theta. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to do some further simplifications of this integration. From inside of the square root I can factor out 5 squared and that 5 squared will get out of the square root as a first order 5 and that 5 will be combined with this 5 and altogether it will become 25. And that 25 is a constant, therefore I'm going to write it down outside of the integral sign. Integration inside the square root, once 5 squared is factored out, I have just secant squared theta minus 1. Outside of the integral, I have secant theta tangent theta d theta. All right. Now, from the second of the three Pythagorean identities, what you can say about secant squared theta minus 1? We know secant squared theta minus 1 is equal to tangent squared theta. The second of the three Pythagorean identities is tangent squared theta plus 1 is equal to secant squared theta. So the terms of that identity can be rearranged to become secant squared theta minus 1 is equal to tangent squared theta. Remember, all of that will be inside of the square root. Therefore, this tangent squared theta term becomes a first order tangent theta term. And that first order tangent theta term will be combined with the already existing tangent theta term right here and write it as a tangent squared theta term. And also don't forget, there is a secant theta inside that integral. All right, now we are going to write down all of these terms. We have a 25 integration. We have a secant theta term and we have a tangent theta term and also square root of a tangent squared theta, which is a first order tangent theta. We said those two can be combined and be written as tangent squared theta. And then we have d theta. Now we are going to use the second of the three Pythagorean identities again. We know that tangent squared theta 
can be written as secant squared theta minus 1. After that, all I have to do is to distribute the secant theta term into each of the two terms inside the parenthesis and write it as two separate integrals. Since I have a 25 also outside, I'm going to write down this integral inside brackets. In fact, inside brackets, I will have two integrals. One is secant theta times secant squared theta, and the other one is secant theta times one. All right, let's go ahead and write down those integrals. I have 25 and then bracket, the first integral will be secant theta times secant squared theta, which is secant cubed theta d theta. And then minus integral secant theta times 1, which is first order secant theta d theta. I will close the brackets. All right. Now it's very interesting. We have to integrate secant cubed theta. Can you remember the answer for that? Please note that integration of secant cubed theta is not a standard result. Every time you see the integral secant cubed theta d theta, make sure to show all work and obtain the final answer for that integral step by step. However, during our last video, I discussed the complete solution procedure for secant cubed theta. Therefore, I'm not going to repeat all that stuff here in this video as well. For anyone who is still needing help on integrating secant cubed theta, I will have the link posted down below in the description. Please follow that link to understand how to integrate secant cubed theta. In fact, for this video, I'm going to directly use the result that was derived in my last video. Integration of secant cubed theta is equal to 1 half secant theta times tangent theta plus 1 half natural logarithm absolute value secant theta plus tangent theta all right let me go ahead and write it down i have a 25 outside brackets the first part is one half secant theta tangent theta plus another one half natural logarithm absolute sign secant theta plus tangent theta and then i have a negative symbol right here and with that integration secant theta d theta. So here's the negative symbol. If you integrate secant theta, we get natural logarithm absolute sign secant theta plus tangent theta. Close the absolute signs, close the brackets. All right, now we can actually go ahead and do some further simplifications. We can combine the like terms. Here I have plus one half natural logarithm secant theta plus tangent theta. Here I have a minus one times natural logarithm secant theta plus tangent theta. So those two can be simplified. I will write a 25 inside brackets. I have a one half secant theta times tangent theta. Then these last two terms will be simplified to become negative one half natural logarithm absolute signs secant theta plus tangent theta. Close absolute signs, close brackets. Now I can also factor out the one half from these two. So let me go ahead and do that. This is going to be equal to 25 over 2 brackets secant theta times tangent theta minus natural logarithm absolute sign secant theta plus tangent theta. Close the brackets. Since this is an indefinite integral, I must also have a plus c. Please note that we are not yet at the final answer. That is because theta is a variable that we introduced. That means I need to go back and keep the final answer in terms of the original variable, which was x. The substitution that we have used is right here. x minus 2 equals 5 secant theta. All right, let me write it down one more time. We have x minus 2 being equal to 5 secant theta. Therefore, we can quite easily see that secant theta is equal to x minus 2 divided by 5. In addition to that, I also need tangent theta because I have tangent theta in these two places. I can once again use the second of the three Pythagorean identities from which I can subject tangent theta as square root secant squared theta minus 1. Once that is simplified, secant theta was x minus 2 over 5. I need that to be squared and minus 1 
all that's inside square root now if i simplify all of that we get tangent theta is equal to inside square root x minus 2 everything squared minus 25 all that's divided by 25 now we can do some further simplifications this becomes square root x squared minus 4x plus 4 minus 25 will be simplified to become minus 21 divided by square root of 25 is a 5. Please also note that this square root symbol is also valid for the denominator 25. That's why I took the square root and wrote it as a 5. All right, now we have both of these terms necessary. We have secant theta right here and the tangent theta is right here. Now we need to go back and substitute those two answers in our integral. Therefore, this integral now becomes equal to 25 over 2 bracket secant theta is x minus 2 over 5 times tangent theta is square root x squared minus 4x minus 21. All that's divided by 5. And then we have minus natural logarithm, absolute signs. Secant theta is x minus 2 over 5 plus tangent theta is square root x squared minus 4x minus 21. All that's inside the square root. All that's divided by 5. And close the absolute signs, close the brackets, and there's a plus C as well. All right, now we can do some further simplifications. We can see that... This is going to be 25 over 2 brackets. Inside the brackets, we have x minus 2 times square root x squared minus 4x minus 21. And that's divided by 5 times 5 will be simplified to become a 25. And then we have natural logarithm. Absolute signs, we have x minus 2 plus square root x squared minus 4x minus 21 and all that's divided by 5, close the brackets, and plus c. Well, this may be simplified a little bit more. However, by this point, you have done reasonably sufficient amount of simplifications. Therefore, you can keep this answer as the final answer for this example. All right, that's a complete example for the first case where delta is greater than 0 and a is also greater than 0. Now, we are going to look at the second case. So, the second case is when the discriminant delta is greater than 0, but a is less than zero. In this case, we said we will need to use sine theta as a substitution. Now we will look at an example. Here's an example integration square root 15 minus 2x minus x squared dx. As you can see that the coefficient of x squared a is equal to negative 1. Coefficient of x which is given as b is equal to negative 2. And then the constant term c is equal to 15. As you can see that a is already less than 0. Now we will look at the discriminant delta which is defined as b squared minus 4ac. b is negative 2 therefore negative 2 squared minus 4a is negative 1 times c is 15. Negative 2 everything squared is a positive value positive 4 and right here I have a negative symbol and there's another negative symbol therefore this second term is also going to be positive that means if I simplify all of that it's going to be positive I do not need to calculate the numerical value of that thing I just need to see if it is positive or negative that means we will have to use a sine theta substitution all right let's see how to do this problem we are going to start this way integration square root from inside of the square root I'm going to factor out a negative 1 and then I will open parenthesis then the terms inside the parenthesis will be x squared plus 2x minus 15 let me close the parenthesis all this is inside the square root and outside I have a dx term all right let's see what further simplifications are required now we are going to complete the square inside of this parenthesis inside the square root when we do that we have integration square root we have a negative symbol outside and we have parenthesis x squared plus 2x minus 15 how do you complete the square we will have x plus 1 everything squared and then i need to subtract the one squared which is a negative 1 and then I have a negative 15 right here negative 15 close the parenthesis all that's inside the square root and outside I have a dx now we will do some further simplifications integral 
inside the square root i have a minus symbol big parenthesis inside of that i have x plus 1 everything squared minus 16 close the parenthesis all that's inside the square root and dx now what i'm going to do is i'm going to distribute this negative symbol into each of these two terms inside the parenthesis then this can be written as integration square root 16 minus x plus 1 everything squared dx please note that this 16 can be seen as 4 squared therefore let me write down that 16 as 4 squared that is just to help my substitution so here's the substitution i'm going to use this term x plus 1 being equal to square root of this term 4 squared which is a 4 sine theta when i use that substitution i get dx being equal to 4 cosine theta d theta all right now the life becomes easy we're going to continue with this integration this is now going to be equal to integral inside square root i have a 4 squared minus and then i have x plus 1 everything squared we said x plus 1 is equal to 4 sine theta therefore all of that's squared that means 4 squared sine squared theta all that's inside the square root and then outside i have a dx term we know dx term is equal to 4 cosine theta times d theta all right now we need to do some further simplifications all this is going to be equal to integration from inside of the square root i can actually factor out a 4 squared it will get out of the square root as a first order 4 and there is another 4 outside of the square root those two fours will be combined to become 16. That 16, I will write outside of the integral sign since that's a constant. Then inside the integral sign, we have square root. When four squared is factored out from inside of the square root, I have one minus sine squared theta. Outside of the square root, I have a cosine theta and a d theta now we can do some further simplifications i have a 16 outside integral what is 1 minus sine squared theta we know from the first pythagorean identity of trig we have sine squared theta plus cosine squared theta is equal to 1 therefore from that we can rearrange the terms and see that 1 minus sine squared theta is equal to cosine squared theta Remember that cosine squared theta term is inside of the square root. Therefore, it will get out of the square root as a first order cosine theta term. And then there is already another first order cosine theta term outside of the square root. Those two will be combined to become cosine squared theta. And with that, we have d theta. Now, we have already seen how to integrate cosine squared theta terms. We can write it as a 2 cosine squared theta term and then we can use cosine double angle identities so in order to write a 2 inside the integral i will also have to divide this 16 by 2 all right let's do some further simplifications outside 16 over 2 is 8 integration 2 cosine squared theta now i'm going to use cosine 2 theta identities we know that cosine 2 theta has three identities from those three identities i'm going to use the second identity which is written as cosine 2 theta is equal to 2 cosine squared theta minus 1 from that we have 2 cosine squared theta being equal to cosine 2 theta plus 1 now all of these will be replaced by cosine 2 theta plus 1 then it becomes integral cosine 2 theta plus 1 i have a d theta term all right now we can quite easily evaluate this integral we have 8 integration of cosine 2 theta is equal to sine 2 theta divided by 2 plus integration of 1 with respect to theta we have a theta and there will be a plus c because this is an indefinite integral now this is not our final answer that is because theta is a variable that we have introduced that means i need to go back and look at my substitution and convert all of these thetas into x's well right here is a substitution we used x plus one is equal to four sine theta 
So let me go ahead and use that. X plus 1 is equal to 4 sine theta. That means we have sine theta being equal to x plus 1 over 4. What we need here is sine 2 theta. How do you find sine 2 theta? We know that sine 2 theta is equal to 2 sine theta times cosine theta. If I have the value for cosine theta, I can use this value right here for sine theta. That means I will know sine 2 theta. All right, now all I have to do is to find cosine theta. We know from the first of the three Pythagorean identities in trig, we have sine squared theta plus cosine squared theta being equal to 1. That means cosine squared theta should be equal to 1 minus sine squared theta. When we take the square root, we have cosine theta being equal to square root 1 minus sine squared theta. Since sine theta is known to us, we can quite easily simplify this answer. Then cosine theta becomes square root 1 minus sine squared theta should be equal to x plus 1 over 4 everything squared. We can simplify it some more. Therefore, this becomes cosine theta should be equal to inside the square root. I will have a 16 minus x plus 1 everything squared all that's divided by 16. We will further simplify this then you can see that this is going to be equal to cosine theta equals 16 will get out of the square root as a 4 and it's in the denominator therefore it is 1 fourth times square root it'll be simplified to become 15 minus 2x minus x squared. All right now we have cosine theta as well sine theta was found to be x plus 1 over 4 now we can quite easily find sine 2 theta sine 2 theta is equal to 2 sine theta times cosine theta that means we have a 2 sine theta plus x plus 1 over 4 let me substitute that x plus 1 over 4 cosine theta is square root 15 minus 2x minus x squared all that's divided by 4 now this can be simplified to become x plus 1 times square root 15 minus 2x minus x squared all that's divided by just 8 all right now we look at our final answer for this question our answer for the integral so far is equal to all of these let me copy that all right, please note that what we have simplified here is sine 2 theta. All right, what I'm going to do is I'm going to use that sine 2 theta value for our final answer right here. Then the integral becomes equal to 8 times sine 2 theta divided by 2. Therefore, it will be x plus 1 times square root 15 minus 2x minus x squared. All that's divided by 8 times 2, which is a 16. And then plus theta. What is theta? We know that sine theta is equal to x plus 1 over 4. That means theta should be equal to sine inverse x plus 1 over 4. Let's write it as that. Sine inverse x plus 1 over 4. Let me close the brackets and there is a plus c outside. All right, that's our final answer for this example. Now we have finished the first two cases. Even though the first two cases were a little bit involved, the third case is going to be quite easy. The third case we have is when delta is equal to zero. We also said we will only look at the situation where a is greater than zero and also c is greater than zero. I will let you think why we do not consider a is less than zero and or c is less than zero with delta being equal to zero. Here's an example for this situation. Integral square root x squared minus 4x plus 4 dx. This question is so very simple. If you first identify a, b and c, a is equal to 1, which is the coefficient of x squared term, and then b is equal to negative 4, which is the coefficient of x term, and c is equal to positive 4, which is the constant term. As you can see that a is positive and c is also positive satisfying these two conditions and then we look at delta 
the discriminant. We know it's equal to b squared minus 4ac, which means negative 4 squared minus 4ac. As you can see, if you simplify that, it's going to be equal to positive 16 minus 16, which is equal to 0. All right. Now, this example satisfies all three of these conditions. Let's see how to solve this problem. We are going to write this integral as integration square root. What we have to do next is to complete the square. x squared minus 4x plus 4 can be written as x minus 2 everything squared that's inside the square root. And then we have dx. Now we can see that this integral becomes a first order x minus 2 dx. Now, if you like, you may integrate it term by term and write it as x squared over 2 minus 2x, or you can use the integration of ax plus b to the nth power dx, which is equal to ax plus b, everything raised to the n plus first power divided by a times n plus 1. If I use that result, this is going to be equal to x minus 2 raised to the second power divided by 2. Since this is an indefinite integral, I will also need a plus c, where c is an arbitrary constant. All right, that's the answer for that third case. Now we have to go for the very last case. Case number four, when delta is less than zero. And we said we will only look at the case where a is greater than zero. In this situation, we said we will have to use the tangent theta substitution. For example, consider integration square root x squared minus 2x plus 17 dx. Now we are going to look at a, b and c of this integral. We know a is equal to 1 which is the coefficient of x squared term and b is equal to negative 2 which is the coefficient of x term and c is equal to 17. As soon as you write those three, you can identify that a is equal to 1, which is greater than 0, which is this condition. And then we will look at delta, the discriminant. Delta is equal to b squared minus 4ac. b is equal to negative 2, negative 2 squared minus 4. a is positive 1, c is 17. Very clearly, you can see that this is going to be negative which is this first condition under number four. All right, now we will see how to solve this integral under this category. We're going to write this integral as integration inside the square root. I'm going to complete the square. If you complete the square for x squared minus 2x plus 17, we will have x minus 1, everything squared minus 1, and then there is this plus 17. Outside, we have a dx term. Inside the square root, any like terms can be combined. We have integration. Inside the square root, I will have x minus 1, everything squared, plus 16, which I can write as a plus 4 squared. Outside, I have a dx term. So the substitution we need here is x minus 1 equals 4 tangent theta. Now, if I differentiate both sides, I get dx being equal to 4 secant theta squared theta d theta. All right, let's go ahead and use that substitution in this integration. This is now going to be equal to integration inside the square root x minus 1 everything squared. Since x minus 1 is equal to 4 tangent theta, that first term is going to be equal to 4 squared tangent squared theta. And then the next term is plus 4 squared. All that's inside the square root outside I have a dx. dx is equal to 4 secant squared theta d theta. Now we can simplify this integration before evaluating the integral. From inside of the square root you can see that I can factor out a 4 squared which will get out of the square root as a first order 4. And there is another 4 right here. Those two 4s will be combined to become a 16. That 16 I will write outside of the integral since it's a constant. Integrate inside the square root. Since 4 squared was factored out, now I have a tangent squared theta plus 1. I have a secant squared theta d theta. All right. 
Now, from the second of the three Pythagorean identities, we know that tangent squared theta plus 1 can be replaced by secant squared theta. Since that term is inside of the square root, that secant squared theta will become a first order secant theta. And that first order secant theta should be combined with this already existing secant squared theta term. Then this integral becomes equal to 16 integration secant cubed theta d theta. All right, now I'm going to directly use the result that we obtained in the last video for the integration of secant cubed theta. Please note that secant cubed theta integral is not a standard result. Whenever you have to evaluate the integral secant cubed theta d theta, maybe as a part of another problem, just like this one, please make sure to show all work. However, to save time for this video, I'm going to directly use the result of the integration of secant cubed theta d theta that I derived in our last video. For those who need help on this integral, I have the link posted down below in the description. Alright, this is equal to 16 times integration of secant cubed theta d theta should be equal to, which I will write inside brackets, 1 half secant theta times tangent theta plus another one half natural logarithm absolute sine secant theta plus tangent theta close absolute signs close brackets since this is an indefinite integral i will also need to write a plus c where c is an arbitrary constant all right now i can do some further simplifications you can see from inside the brackets i can factor out one half when I factor out one half and combine that with the 16 right here, all that will become just eight. Bracket, the first term is secant theta times tangent theta plus natural logarithm, absolute sign, secant theta plus tangent theta, close absolute sign, close bracket, I have the plus C outside. Now this is also not the final answer, that is because Theta is a variable that we introduced. We need to keep the final answer in terms of the variable given, which is the variable x. So we need to go back and look at the substitution that was selected. The substitution that we selected was x minus 1 is equal to 4 tangent theta. Let me write it down. x minus 1 is equal to 4 tangent theta. Now from that, I can find tangent theta. Tangent theta should be equal to x minus 1 divided by 4. All right, now we know the tangent theta. However, our final answer not only has tangent theta, but also we have secant theta. So let's find secant theta. From the second of the three Pythagorean identities, we know that secant squared theta should be equal to 1 plus tangent squared theta. That means the first order secant theta should be equal to square root 1 plus tangent squared theta. All right, now I'm going to use the tangent theta, the value that we calculated in the previous step, which is x minus 1 over 4. We are going to substitute that and simplify. Square root, we have 1 plus tangent squared theta should be equal to x minus 1 squared over 4 squared, which is 16. Now, if you simplify this some more, you can see that secant theta should be equal to square root 16 plus x minus 1, if thing squared, all that's divided by 16 is inside of the square root. Therefore, without the square root, I can write it as a 4 in the denominator. All right, this can be simplified some more to become secant theta equals square root x squared minus 2x plus 17 all that's divided by 4 all right now we also have found secant theta earlier we found tangent theta to be equal to x minus 1 over 4 now i'm going to copy down the answer of the integral that we have obtained so far which is right here all right i have an 8 right here bracket secant theta secant theta is equal to all of these square root x squared minus 2x plus 17 divided by 4 and then times tangent theta. We showed that tangent theta is equal to x minus 1 over 4. 
with that plus natural logarithm absolute sine secant theta inside square root x squared minus 2x plus 17 divided by 4 plus tangent theta which is x minus 1 over 4 close absolute signs close brackets and I have a plus C an arbitrary constant outside if you would like to do some further simplifications we may do so we have an 8 outside brackets square root x squared minus 2x plus 17 times x minus 1 f thing divided by 16 plus natural logarithm absolute signs square root x squared minus 2x plus 17 plus x minus 1 all that's divided by 4 close absolute signs close brackets and I have a plus C also outside all right right here is the final answer for that example all right now if you would like to apply these methods and do some practice homework questions I would like to assign you some questions question number one evaluate the integral inside the square root you have x squared minus 6x minus 7 dx your second homework problem is evaluate the integral inside square root you have 9 plus 8x minus x squared dx your third homework problem is evaluate the integral inside the square root you have x squared minus 12x plus 36 dx your fourth homework problem is evaluate the integral inside the square root you have x squared minus 14x plus 58 outside dx all right try to work on these problems if you are interested in mastering the methods discussed in this video i hope you enjoyed this video thank you so much